Okay, at this point, I need to attach the lower jaw. So this is a complete head, but instead of using this as the, the full bottom jaw, I want to use this just as the top jaw on this creature. And I'm informed by my sketch, right? My sketch has this big open mouth. So now I've got the big eyes. I've got this kind of head assembly going onto a thicker neck. And at this point, I need to create my own upper jawline. So I'm going to do it with my lasso. I only have a 0.8 feather. And I'm just going to cut it out from right here. Now, the only thing that kind of shows that there is an opening in that lizard's mouth, kind of seaming together the lizard's mandible with his cranium, is this faint line. And the way the place it really shows up is in these highlights, like a little bit of saliva catching the light. So well, I'm going to introduce a new tool here. And usually I wouldn't introduce this until we've put the whole body together and we need to like seam together different parts. But this is the perfect tool for this instance. I just want this line not to exist and I want to replace it with more of the texture that's around it, more of these scales. The tool for that is called the clone stamp tool. And we're going to use the clone stamp tool in this class in a very particular way. We're always going to create a brand new layer and I'm always going to mark that layer red because the clone stamp can be kind of difficult to understand. And then I'm going to label that layer clone stamp in all caps. So that is always going to go on top of everything. And then on occasion, probably in this occasion, once we've done that, then we can merge it in with the intended layer. So now that I have a clone stamp empty layer, no matter what I do on that layer, I know is limited to that layer. I don't want to use the clone stamp to replace pixels. I want to use it to create new pixels on top. So clone stamp is underneath the brush tool. We want the clone stamp, not the pattern stamp. So the clone stamp looks like a rubber stamp. And before you can use it, you have to define a source point to copy pixels from. And you do that by holding down option and then clicking on that point. You also want to look at the, the top options for the clone stamp, just like a brush. I want it to be 100% opacity on my new layer. I want it to be soft edged. And I want it to be fairly large. This is a good size. Um, but then most importantly, right here, where it says, where is it sampling from? I want it to say all layers not just current layer because my current layer is empty and there's nothing to sample from so all layers that means i can click no it's always going to stay on this but it's what is it copying pixels from so in this way i can hold down option and i can click and copy pixels from the feathers right and you see how it's kind of tracking along with me that little crossbar or I can copy pixels from my lizard. Maybe right below it. Make it so this spacing never existed. It's a great way to continue patterns. I am continually holding our moving it and pressing option and clicking. So I'm like stamping from different places. Like if I want this highlight here, and then I place it there. Because if I don't continually choose new places to grab it from, it's just going to travel with me. And that's not always going to match. So I'm pretty used to using the clone stamp tool and used to just having my finger hover over the option button. <laughs> just like with digital painting when you use option to steal colors for your palette. And here I'm just using that clone stamp to basically 
close that mouth. I can even use it to continue the pattern of these lines that the mouth stopped. Very versatile tool, very helpful tool. And we'll use it more once we've had to kind of transition between elements, once we get more of it seamed together. Now, because I used it at 100%, it's pretty sharp, but it's soft edged. So when you replace, like the middle of it's 100%, but everything around it kind of softly blends. And now because it's on its own layer, I can just turn it on and off. And if I ever want to, I can fade the opacity of the layer. And I can also erase from it directly. So that's kind of patching with the clone stamp. You hold down Option to select an area, and then that travels with you. That with dodge and burn, you can pretty much create any kind of texture you need. Speaking of dodge and burn, now that I'm working on this jaw, you see that's the clone stamp without <laughs> the thing that it's masking. It's floating on its own layer. But I want to burn a little bit and dodge a little bit on my mouth. If I burn just a little bit under that fur line, it will look like that's kind of uh, coming from indented pores in the skin, like hair really would. I can even kind of enhance the shadows that are already there a little bit. And I can burn a little bit around the, around the mouth line, but the problem is if I burn too much, then it's going to reveal my clone stamping. Because my clone stamping is not going to burn. Do you see? So at this point, before I do a lot of burning, I think I want to merge the clone stamp with my intended layer. And that's why I mark it red. So I can select both those layers and then go to Layer Merge. So now they're all in one layer together, and they can all be adjusted that way. They can all be dodged and burned and edited that way. Like that. Smile never existed. So now I have a top jaw. Let's get a lower jaw. Let's get that hippo in there. I'm going to immediately play with the um, levels and adjustments. Because this hippo is much larger than these other creatures. It didn't have such a, a clear, controlled photographing space. And so it's a little blasted out with its lighting. So I'm going to take its mid-tones and darken them. I can even take its shadows and deepen them just a little bit. And maybe limit them just a tiny bit got these big tusks. I can also transform it. I'm going to start by distorting it. And I want to get that jaw to feel like it matches. That it can connect. In a way that makes sense. And the goal will be to actually have this tusk overlap with the front or the top. We'll see. Or maybe I have to shorten the tusk. We will see. Then I can warp it, maybe extend it a little bit this way and this way. There we go. So it's a little bit more wide open. Okay, now cutting it out. I'm more interested in these internal edges, right? So I can do a rough cut. And delete. But I'm really interested in the hard edges versus the soft edges. So the hard edge I'm most concerned about is where the jaw overlaps the chest. 
for my design. Especially since it's at a water line, that's a little problematic, but that's just how you get hippos. So it's very dark there. But if I can cut just right inside of that, then I can use dodge and burn to kind of make the lighting help turn that lip around. Notice I'm not zooming in too much because there's so much I can do in refining. And it's not, I mean, it's great to have perfect selections. But there's so much I can do with just dodging and burning, clone stamping if needed, to massage these things. That zooming in and getting this particular about the pixels doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Bless you. All right. So now that I've kind of defined that edge, now I can go to my soft edged eraser at 100% and get rid of that hard edge where it starts to transition, like about to there. And then I can go to a lower percentage and start transitioning it. Like maybe something like this. Okay. Then it's also going to make sense if this is overlapping this, then there's going to be a pretty deep shadow inside that mouth. So I'm going to use my burn tool on the midtones and really deepen that shadow in the mouth, the cast shadow. and a little around the tusk as well. And then I might go to the head, this upper jaw, and burn on this side, even though the color doesn't match at all, right? Get those mid-tones a little darkened. And then it's just getting more and more colorful, so then go to my sponge tool and desaturate it a little. So it'll be easier to blend these into the same creature. And it's starting to work. So we're doing a lot of almost finished work on the head before we seam it to the rest of the body. This dodging, this burning. Uh, to show you the opposite of the sponge tool, I can go to the sponge and then saturate and show you that. Like if I want the mouth to stay pretty pink, even as I'm getting it darker, I can go in and then saturate it again. And these tools, dodge, burn, you see all the different, they, they work fast. In my history, <laughs> there's a lot there. And so you don't want them too strong. That might be a little too pink for the mouth about halfway, about there. I might want a little bit more of that saturation in the eyes. So I'll use the saturate function. To kind of bring that around the eyes. So I get a little pink at the edges of the eye. So without that sponge tool saturating, it looks kind of dead. But with that sponge tool saturating, it gives a little life to it. I can do that at the edge of this fur, too, especially because it's overlapping something that's very, very colorful. So these are powerful image adjustment tools directly affecting, affecting the pixels. And it's not brightening it. It's not darkening it. It's just intensifying the color. But if I want to go back in, I use burn to darken the midtones. 